Wrestling buddies want to be your buddies. Hey, buddy. Buddy! You got me mad now. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Yo, what's up everybody? Fast Lane is over, which means the very next major event for us is going to be WrestleMania 32 in Dallas. A hundred some thousand people. It's going to be incredible. And after Monday Night Raw this week, whoo, we got a lot to talk about. So let's get right into it. Welcome, everybody, to the Wrestling and Padre Slamcast right here on AfterBuzz TV, on Podcast One, on YouTubes, all over the earth. Welcome in the crew. We have a... Uh, we are a team. Yeah, we're all a big team. Let's get into it. We are at WrestlingBuds on Twitter, Facebook.com slash WrestlingBuds. I am at Jay Quasto, the other man in studio with me right now, wearing a sweet chew bubblegum kick-ass t-shirt. He's the host of Curtain Jerks and 16 Bits. Find him on Twitter at Curtain Jerks. He's Scott Narver. Scott Narver, he's Scott Narver. Curtain Jerk and Padre, he's always there to save the day. Scott Narver, he's Scott Narver. Well, this is no doubt an exciting week for okay. wrestling. And, of course, big thanks to one of my favorite rappers in all of wrestling, MVP, for making that song for me. I love his songs on iTunes. They're MVP great. made that song? MVP made that song. Did, did you hear his most recent entrance song? It was nothing like what we just heard. Yeah, that's how versatile he is. Wow. Give me a hell yeah. I had no idea. You can have a hell yeah. He could play guitar? Yeah, of course. And he's he a, sings with a bit of a twang to his voice? Yeah, he's the most valuable player. Well, I, I'm not going to disagree. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's impressive. Good stuff. It's very impressive. Well, there is no Chuck Rice this week. He is uh, going to be working with for the Oscars. He's polishing Oscars, for, everybody. For Oscar, I think, yes. He's, he's polishing all of them. Sure, that's a lot of Oscars. So if you don't see a shiny Oscar at the Oscars, blame Chuck. So help me God, if he doesn't come back with one, I'm going to be a little upset. He's a man. I don't think you want to get near it, because if he had to smuggle it out of there, you don't want it. Well, that's a good point. But anyway, find him on Twitter at CRice17. But from Washington, D.C., one of the OG co-founders, he's the host of Dishing on Movies on the YouTubes. Just had a massive video that went viral last week with a guy, the tipsy bartender, a, a guy who hangs out with hot chicks. What a loser, am I right? <laughs> you can find him on Twitter at The Walking Dale. You know he's Dale Rutledge. I got a puppet. I got a puppy. Bad news. Hey, brava. What's going on, buddy? Not much, man. How you doing? Doing pretty good. Hey, I was just thinking we should perform all of our entrance songs live at WrestleMania this year. Oh, can you imagine the pandemonium? Oh, my God. <laughs> wow, we'll get MVP to show up? I mean, that's on you, man. He made your theme song. Yeah, we're not close. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, we talk video uh, games when we see each other. We talk T-poses. Let's be honest. You haven't paid him residuals on that song, have you? No, I'll be honest. I have not. <sighs> Dale. <gasps> Anyways, we <laughs> we have so much. Oh, first off, let's just do our, our contest right off the bat. So... Our friends at Lucha Underground were nice enough to send us a whole bunch of uh, really awesome... They made comic books for the series. Mil Mortes drew these and wrote these, right? I believe he did. Yeah. And they were edited by Katrina. Oh. Pretty sure. So, these are really awesome. These are nice. So, we decided... I've read it. It's very good. You know, if you're not in Los Angeles, you can't come see a live taping. So... You're not allowed. You're not allowed. And so, we were like, you know, let's send these out to our fans. Let's do this, because you guys deserve it, and these are really, really fun. So, here's what we're going to do. Limited edition. Limited edition. So, recently, we've had a... We haven't had a lot of people go to the iTunes page recently. We've had a lot of new listeners, and we appreciate you. But we need people to go to the iTunes page. That way, the word gets out. It's been a while. So, please, do this. Go to the iTunes page, rate us five stars, write us the most clever, fun review you can, screenshot it for us, and tweet us the review. It's as simple as that. It'll take you a minute. And then the best two reviews we have this week, we're going to send you a Lucha Underground comic book straight from the source. Free shipping. Free shipping. Yeah, we'll, we'll pay for it. 
which I hope you don't live overseas because, God, that's expensive. Yeah, but, hey, if you live overseas and you're listening to the show, that's great. Thanks yeah. so much. No, we appreciate you. the iTunes page. God. We can only check the U.S. iTunes page unless you know of a way of doing it. Otherwise, they got to send proof that, you know, like you said, send them the screen cap. Exactly. So send proof. Tweet us a picture, put it on our Facebook wall, facebook.com slash wrestling buds or at wrestling buds on Twitter. And the favorite two of the week, we're going to send you a comic book. How about that, guys? Yeah. Let's do that. Number one, issue number one. That's right. So rate us, review us. And if you've already done the rating or review a million times, we appreciate you. We'll find something for you down the road, but we really need as many ratings and reviews as we can because we or think we just really... make another iTunes account. Why? Why? Why would we do that? No, not us, them. Oh. Yeah, they make oh, another yeah. ID. Make a second ID. Make okay. a second ID. You make mentioned, a second ID. You know, I'm not mentioned in the right, comments sir. yet. What? You know, you could write about Scott. What? Dale, what ahead. are you guys saying? You're whispering. I can't hear I'm any just, of it. We're talking about making an iTunes <laughs> review. Oh, yeah. Brock's a big <laughs> iTunes account user. Yeah. No, big time. <laughs> Me like WTF. Uh, and anyways, we have so much to talk about. Plus, our special guest, Chavo Guerrero, is coming up on the show. You both got to interview him last week, and we can't wait for everyone to hear it. Yeah, Chavo, he's a that guy's amazing. He's been around forever. Yep. Uh and makes everything better. He's not aging at all. No, he's it's creepy. He's getting younger. It's weird. Yeah. Yeah, if you if you look at his skin, you you're like, "Whoa, Chavo." No. <laughs> you know what's funny? I I met the lovely lady who did that voice last week. What? I, my my good friend Jackie Palumbo, who has worked with WWE in the past, she's a... Um, Daughter of Chuck Palumbo? No, she's a producer and does stuff. She brought her friend to my comedy show at the Improv last week, and I met her. She actually works on Lucha Underground as well. She's a talent coordinator, but my, Jackie was like, hey, guess guess who she is? And she goes, ooh, Chavo. I'm like, yes. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta get her to do some ooh Johnnies for the show. Ah, that'd be a little disturbing, I think, for her. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Hello. That sounds more like a date night than yeah. Okay, Slamcast News. <laughs> I was, go ahead, say what you were going to say. Chuck Palumbo's going to be very oh, upset boy. about this. I don't want him running me over in his motorcycle. Yeah, you I don't can't want have that. that. I don't want cannot that. have that. Anyways, couple news items for the week. Uh, Shinsuke Nakamura officially, as we all know, but officially has been signed by WWE. They had a little press conference and photos. And so uh, it's going to be a very exciting next five weeks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I am so glad to, to see him uh, come in. I can't wait for this to happen. But I did think it was a little silly for the tweet from WWE just to say, breaking news. <laughs> it's like, Meh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that but I like the fact that they tried to make it as kayfabe as possible, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's good news all the way around. It was just they, they didn't have to. I mean, we are, come on. Come we knew. On. Oh, we knew. No doubt about that. So let's talk Lucha really quick. Um, did you see this past week, Dale? Our friend, executive producer Eric Van Wagenen, actually took to the internet because I guess there were some kind of like rumors being spread around that even though they haven't filmed season three yet, there's some kind of rumor saying that they weren't going to be able to afford season four and that it was going to get canceled. And so Eric basically went on the internet and was like, hey, if you want to pay attention to naysayers, go ahead. But the show isn't going anywhere. We make the show for whatever budget we're given and not a penny more. And Dario's so. rich. Right? Yeah, like there's a lack of money at that show. Come on, have you watched that? All the gold that they have ever earned and all the money he throws around? Mm-hmm. They got money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's weird. I, I mean, this is the thing about the wrestling community that we've, we've talked to before, but just the immense amount of negativity that's always out there, even for a product that is, you know, being loved so much like yeah. um, uh, well, Lucha Underground right now, it's it's weird that people just always have such a negative attitude towards things doing well. It's it's very strange. I don't I don't know a lot of other communities that are like super into things, but also very anti them all at the same time. It's, it's a very weird subject. Right Cheerleading now. community. Yeah, you ever the cheerleaders? cheerleaders yeah. You ever seen Bring It On one through nine? I'll tell you what. Yeah, they build it up, but then backstage they tear it down. Ugh. Hey yo, they sure do. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's one a good. Through nine. You, you, <laughs> you bring up a great point, man. It's a the support for Lucha Underground has been been fantastic, and Eric's been amazing to us, and the whole staff there's been incredible. They're, they're constantly giving us. Whoa, whoops! I hit that accidentally. <laughs> Hi, Seth. <laughs> Sorry. They're giving us a trip to Hawaii. We're going Hawaii. to Hawaii. The best iTunes review. No, I'm Luau Underground. That's right. Coconut flavored rain. <laughs> Uh, 
No, but they. <laughs> it's gonna happen. Can you imagine? I'm gonna make the comic book of it. Oh, you should. I'm gonna <laughs> give it away. Yeah. Get on it by drawings might be rather poor. I don't mind. All right. I appreciate how to draw a pineapple. We love the effort. <laughs> But yeah, we uh, they've been incredibly nice to us, and so obviously we're rooting for it, and so we just wanted to uh, show support there that, you know, just enjoy stuff while it happens, and don't worry about the future. Don't uh, be a cornet. It, whoa, there's only one of them. <laughs> Seriously, and and we're not even, what are we, five episodes into the second season, y'all are worried about season four? Let it, let it play out for a second. Jeez, Louise. Yeah, and, enjoy it. And how fun is it playing out? All of a sudden, Dario Cueto, like we get the backstory from Mysterio. We'll get to that anyway. Yes. But speaking of the future, uh, we got an announcement these past 24 hours. Oh, man. Just feel that music, Dale. Feel it. Oh, man. I am bouncing. I already bought my ticket for the hoe train. You know. Wait a minute. You're you getting, know. How are you getting on the hoe train? Listen, if, if you don't know how to get a ticket for the hoe train, I cannot help you out. Really. I don't know how to get a ticket. Yeah, I don't know how to get a ticket. Scott and I are flabbergasted right now. I'm constantly throwing off the caboose of the hoe train for not having a ticket. <laughs> using using words like flabbergasted aren't going to help you get on the hoe train. Well, this is sh- shenanigans. It's ridiculous. I got to talk to this conductor of the hoe train. Yeah, who's the conductor of the hoe train? The man who's getting inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame this year, the Godfather, a.k.a. the Good Father, a.k.a. Papa Shango. A.K.A. whatever else you want to call him. Uh, Kama Sutra? There no. you go. Uh, sure. No, it wasn't Kama Sutra. It was, uh, what was it? It's Kama something. Uh, Kama I, Mustafa. A Karma Chameleon. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So. Good for him. Good for him. Although, Dale, are you a little surprised? Cause, <laughs> seeing him stand next to Sting so far? <laughs> I think, you know, it's interesting. The, the the order of the announcement is a little odd. I mean, he's obviously been in wrestling forever, and I, I think it's it's definitely deserved. But it's also interesting with somebody who was Papa Shango to also call him the godfather rather than his real name. I don't know. I always get confused on these announcements where, where and how they decide to do them all because I feel like, you know, he'd be a great guy to help fill out what's going on uh like for the rest of the inductees but as the number two i don't know yeah it did, it did seem a little odd but hey he's a great dude so he deserves it yeah placement's weird he should be you know you go yeah. three in and then it's like hey now here's a you know a fun one that everybody likes like now godfather because looking at that graphic of just the two of them sting and godfather it really looks like so those are two pimps going into <laughs> the hall of fame we <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they should be a team. And I'll say this about him I mean, too. Go ahead, Dale. Oh, I was going to say we we may understand it more as the other inductees are announced. I mean, I think you know there's there's obviously some big names floating out there. Dan O'Brien is I think at the top of the list currently, but I I feel like they would they would wait a minute on putting him in. But uh, yeah, maybe once we see the rest of the inductees, it'll make more sense. I'm not sure. Maybe they're a team. Maybe we're going to come aboard the crew. Train. Yeah, let's do that. I'll, I'll board that. Absolutely. Did you say the crow train? I did. Okay, that's okay. You're funny. <laughs> I wish I had the crow soundbite right now. I'm a little <laughs> upset that I don't. It's all right. Remember that one? We'll put it in post. I'll put it in post. That's mm-hmm. what we'll do. I will say this too. You know, young guys should watch a guy like him because you talk about embracing what you're given. Say what you will about Papa Shango. He embraced it and made it pretty cool. Same with the Godfather. Same with the Nation of Domination. I mean, he embraced whatever he was given, and he used it to the max. Yeah. He really made whatever it was work. Like, you know, people joke about ideas like Fandango and stuff like that. But if you run with it and you own it, anything can be really fun and entertaining when you back it. Because I have a lot of great memories of going to shows and seeing Godfather. And, yeah, you weren't necessarily into it for the wrestling, which he was good at. Yeah. You take it for granted. But when he was out, it was fun fun right that's and and the papa shango thing i remember as a kid i was like god what the hell is this thing Mm -hmm. you know the 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 dry ice skull yeah just creep yeah all the creepy uh costumes and props that he would have coming out there for for the sake of a watching a variety show he was great at bringing variety yeah and the sign of a hall of famer is being part of one of the signs is being versatile and he certainly was that so Mm -hmm. hey congrats to the godfather and I love them as the good father. I think that was such a such a simple switch, but so brilliant. Yeah. When when Right to yeah. Censor was mocking all the parental, you know, uh, 
organizations that were complaining about the good him becoming the good father was freaking genius. He power bombed a hoe that was Victoria through a table. Yeah. That's a that's a Hall of Famer right there, Victoria, for sure. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. For taking that power bomb especially. Because mm-hmm. that was that was hard. But yeah, I mean Dale, it should be exciting to see who else gets nominated. I'm not nominated, but inducted over the next five weeks. Yeah, there's somebody in particular that you guys are kind of rooting for. Well, uh, just a real quick mention also, because JBL said APA is coming back together to induct Godfather. So that's exciting as well. Yes, Um, it is. But, uh, you know, with our announcement coming up of what's happened in wrestling that's so big, I know who I'm pushing for to go in the Hall of Fame. Hmm. Mean Street Posse. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you're, you're serious. I am very serious. Why not? <laughs> Same thing. Those guys were fun. Those guys were great characters. I enjoy the hell out of them. Who knows? You might with Shane coming back. I know the Mean Street Posse would get a huge pop. I I believe so. I think they. I think no, that, no they wouldn't. No, they would not. How dare you? Hey, <laughs> damn it, Dale. Shame on Nobody you. Nobody liked the Mean Street Posse. Come on. We just shame Dale for I, you. Yeah, a thousand times over. We'll add those thousand shames in post. There it is. And that was the Slamcast News. All right, so there's just a few things to talk about. Now, we we have been hearing for the last week or so uh, about the Vincent J. McMahon uh, Legacy Award, Legacy of Excellence, Legacy of Excellence Award, and they were saying, you know, well, you didn't win. Well, I'd have no legacy with, or excellence. How am I going to win? That? Well, right, you forgot the excellence, so boom, out. Yeah. What are you going to do? But they're they're talking about oh, who's going to win the award? Who's going to be nominated? Or who's gonna, whatever? Right. We don't know exactly what's going to happen. And Major speculation gets you intrigued, gets you to tune in. It very, it very, very much so. And so Vince comes out last night. That's how we kick off Monday Night Raw. And he tries to give a speech. The, the crowd is wetting him the entire time, mm-hmm. which I was a little upset. I'm like, come on, guys, show some respect. Yeah, but he can handle it. No, he did. He certainly did handle it. Yeah. And what were your what were your thoughts? Well, Vince is giving that speech. What were your thoughts on who exactly was going to get the award? I, I honestly thought some legend was going to come out. I assumed Triple H. I thought it was a way of building up Roman Reigns and Triple H that it was going to be that. Uh, Triple H was going to come out. Roman Reigns was going to Superman punch the award and, you know, chaos ensues. Okay. That's what I assumed. Dale, what were you thinking? Uh, I halfway thought he was going to give it to himself. He was out there so long. <laughs> That's true. He was out there quite a bit. Um, so then, without further ado, he gives the award to – the legacy award to his daughter, Stephanie McMahon. Sorry, Linda. Yeah. Yeah, what's up with that, Linda? Yeah. Well, but if you were going to give somebody a legacy award, uh, you really should give it to one of your own offspring. Otherwise, you know. You don't give it to the wife, you know, for a little uh, little action later on? Why, wife isn't legacy. Wife creates legacy with you. Well, your she... legacy has to be has to be a, a handing down of generations. So I, I kind of see what they were playing at there. I see. Well, just as Stephanie is giving a... A very tearful acceptance. Here we go. Money talk. Talk. This happens. Dala dala, dala dala. The entire universe collectively loses their minds and their bowels. And their bowels. Everyone goes crazy. A man we haven't seen in six years. Many of whom thought would never set foot in the WWE again. Dances on the ramp, dances down to the ring, does his strut inside of that ring, and it, there's about a minute long number of chants. Yeah, it's, I mean, as I hear the music now, I can't believe it. It, it. it was a you cannot believe what's going on moment. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the best part about it for me, I mean, I was totally shocked. I don't think anybody could have ever predicted this. Uh, I, I just, I mean, like you said, 2009, I think, is the last time that we saw Shane. But <laughs> seeing him, and I think even Vince, but I definitely saw Shane getting a little teary eyed at the reaction. And, and Vince was beaming. He definitely had a prideful beam 
behind uh, trying to, you know, not like the situation for his character's sake, but mm-hmm. just the emotion that was happening inside of that ring. What a what a great moment for the three of them to get to share it together. I was I was really touched by that. It was pretty incredible, and the the shock that Steph and Vince both pulled off was outstanding, and and the moments between you know Vince going to embrace him and Shane, you know. Not playing it big, like it. It shows how great Shane is of just the whoop, you know, put the hand on the chest. I'm not gonna hug you, and then handshake, mm-hmm. and then slowly like putting his hand down, you know. Yeah. Those those great those great great moments that are that Shane the whole McMahon is just capable of. Well, Linda, not so much, but yeah. you know, uh, it's you're just immediately drawn in again, and the story that they tell on top of it, which, which we is, don't know the whole story yet. Right, Vince but talks about is, I want that I want that lockbox. I don't even know what he's talking about. Right, but a lot of it being true to life of you know what was set up in play of he was next in line that it's speculated like this is playing out for real that they're now doing this that he went and did his other businesses he went over to China and then working on movie companies and stuff like that and then now is back and there was a real falling out from what I understand. Yeah, like th- this has some truth to it, which as we say on the show is the best type of wrestling show there is when there are elements of truth to something and you're you're not quite sure where the line is sure absolutely and i thought for sure that this would be like uh him taking over raw in like a general manager manager capacity so i kind of saw that coming but Mm -hmm. i did not see this matchmaking no And, and i will we talked about this a couple of weeks ago you know the injuries have have compiled in the wwe and everyone's like how is wrestlemania 32 going to build and I, I I'm not going to toot my own horn but I did say Shane McMahon is someone I said on this show like a month ago Shane McMahon is someone who can salvage all the injuries at Wrestlemania if he shows up back into a storyline but most people are like nah it's not going to happen Dale we got a tutor in the studio we got a tutor who wants a lesson oh boy <laughs> <laughs> the one time I'm glad not to be there <laughs> but uh but Vince asks alright what do you want Shane oh, what, what, what is it that you want I want control of Monday Night Raw with the Mean Street Posse in my corner. There it is. And going into the Hall of Fame. So Vince says, well, how about this? If you really want control again, you're going to have to earn it. One night, one match, WrestleMania against... The Undertaker. What the hell? And not just that. It's not just a one-on-one match with, you know, no stipulation. Hell in a cell. That's so... So that's insane. Crazy. It's freaking insane. What, what Dale? Where is this going? I, I it's going to have to play out at some point. We didn't see Taker last night. No, and I, I mean I don't think I, I think we'll see the the ever elusive Taker do his normal, you know, ominous coming to get you type of stuff leading into Mania. But no, that's the boogeyman. I, I He's just, coming to get you. Yeah. Oh, oh, is that who that guy is? Oh, <laughs> there he is. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I, I I don't know. I was just blown away by it. I could not believe that he's going to give us a match. And I want, I just I wondered how long this has been in the works. Like, when when this all came to fruition and, and him, you know, I mean, like we said, 2009 was the last time he was there. That's a long time to not be thinking about wrestling. I mean, so is he even in a gym, even in the ring? I wonder wonder where his mind has been at, or did this all just kind of get sprung up on everybody? <laughs> he looks great, but at the same time, you know, there's got to be a ring rust. I'm sure he's been working out, but... And for The Undertaker, I mean, Shane's not a big guy compared to who he usually is in the ring with, so The Undertaker, health-wise, should be okay for him. But I just don't know which way this is going to go, because everyone loves The Undertaker, Clearly, everyone loves Shane. Something's got to give over these next five weeks, I think. Just... What's great for me is that this makes the Undertaker's match matter again. Like, we, you know, we saw from him wrestling Bray. It's like, yeah, okay, it was in there, and it was it was fine. But it, it, it's hard to, once the streak is broken, it's like, well, you can win or lose. There's not really a lot at stake. And, and I don't know, it just, I think it was kind of a weird follow-up for breaking the streak. So, to have him at WrestleMania and in a match where something else is at stake and it has nothing to do with The Undertaker really at all. It's just him taking out, you know, Vince's frustration. I think it's great, and it actually makes it significant and, and truly matter again. Yeah, for control of Sunday Night Heat. I mean, who would have thought? I mean, that's a huge, yeah. huge endeavor. I can't believe he wants that show back. 
I mean, I would. You tell me you wouldn't take it? Nah, I guess I would take it. So, yeah, I don't know which way this is going to go, but I'm excited to see what happens. We obviously have Shane versus Undertaker, but we also now have Triple H bloodying up Roman Reigns like a stuck pig. I mean, it was pretty brutal. Yeah, on Luau Underground. It's crazy yeah. that that... Luau Underground. Just a, their first segment. Mm-hmm. That's what it was. He, he, he comes out in leather and jeans. You better look out. Yeah, because he's not in boss mode anymore. No. He's in fight mode. I'll tell you what, Dale, what do you think about this? If if people were upset about Roman Reigns winning at Fastlane, they did a pretty good job of making people care in a matter of 20 minutes. Yeah, I mean, this this did a lot of building, just like you said, in a very little amount of time. And, and I, I really loved, for whatever reason, the move where Triple H did the uh, Reigns you know, like cocking its fist type thing and then moved it in the suck it. I don't know. Something really funny and entertaining about that. But Triple H, it's nice to see him have this vindictive side and, and not, not be the boss. Cause you know, you kind of forget who he is or who he was, whatever you want to say, uh, when you see him in a suit every week. So I, I like that he came out and, and was being this just malicious character. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's on the pulse of everything. He knows the backlash that, you know what is coming from this feud or reigns being the guy and he knows how to crank it up and create interest in it you know he knows he's not going to sway everybody but he's definitely swaying some people with you know blooding up roman reigns and then making this far more compelling Mm -hmm. i also think that there's more to come for this match i don't i don't know if we'll get a stipulation per se but you know, maybe a special guest referee or something else that can stack the deck for Triple H in, in some kind of way. I, I feel like there's more moving pieces yet to come for this. I, I think there's a couple ways this can go. Part of me says that Triple H actually retains at WrestleMania and hangs onto it until Seth Rollins returns. Or mm. or somehow <laughs> Roman... Enjoying that soup there, Dale? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a delicious soup. What were you saying, Johnny? Is it tomato bisque? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> or Roman somehow turns, wins the title, and then ends up feuding with Rollins once he comes. I don't know. I I think they realize that the reaction Roman's getting, it's not the reaction that they want. Right. And if they're going to put the strap on him at WrestleMania 32, they have to be ready for the backlash. Well, we still – no, no, no. It's not backlash not anymore, Not the pay-per-view. Johnny. Yeah, right. they don't – it's now payback. Sure. Uh, but – with uh, with Reigns, we still don't know what Rock is doing yet at the show, which you kind of thought would have been set in place at this show since mm. they've been making so many big announcements. You know, Rock is somewhere in the shuffle of all this. Do you think he'll have something to do with Reigns? Could be. You know, there there was talk of, you know, last year about him and Triple H going at it again. Uh, they had, the obviously, the tete-a-tete at last year's WrestleMania. Mm. So Rock's got to be in there somewhere in some big way. And uh, they're trying to sell 100,000 seats, and, I mean, they're getting there, I think, by making the couple matches that they've made so far. But Rock's got to be in there somewhere. Do you see him having a match? I think they would have said if he was going to. And mm-hmm. now that we know another major player is out with another match that is made uh, yeah. with Brock and Dean, you know, Rock's not in that equation either. So he's going to be somewhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it all it all obviously falls on what his filming schedule is like and and what the you know like what the movie enables him to do. I, I mean, I'd heard a rumor about the insurance on the movie he's filming currently would not allow him to take part in a physical altercation like that. I mean, probably based off of him, you know, ripping up his stomach <laughs> the last time he wrestled Oof. and having to post uh, bone the production of what was that Hercules? I think was was at that particular time. Perhaps, yeah. So, but either way, I, I think we we could definitely see him involved in something. You could even see him come out and help Shane, honestly. I mean, there's there's a lot of places that you could find The Rock that would be appropriate, but somewhere with the Usos or, or Reigns would make sense, but I, I don't see him getting physical at, at, in an actual match. Well, speaking of The Usos, I find this interesting. Right now, the New Day, they're I love the fact they stole the titles. They're mm-hmm. riding high. Besides the Usos, now that the Dudleys have turned, there's not really, and I'm not going to count Lucha Dragons because Kalisto has the U.S. title. That takes precedent for him. So there's no other face tag teams that could really face the New Day. And I feel like they have. Oh, no. Who? Well, sir, it hasn't happened yet, but I believe in the golden truth. Not at WrestleMania? 
Oh, you sound like a regular R Truth, sir. Oh, you got doo doo on your foot. Yeah, you got doo doo. <laughs> I love the Judgment. golden truth. My point is, it's re- it's WrestleMania. They haven't even gotten together and having a match yet. So New Day, something major has to happen. New Day has to be heavily involved. Is this where we see someone come up from NXT and automatically challenge them, or are we just going to get another no. Usos New Day? I mean, I think I think that Fastlane they were building for the the League of Nations to take on New Day. I mean, you could but, see them in a, in a three on three. For, for the because what are those guys going to do? They love those guys, Sheamus and Rusev, and I guess ADR. They, they, there's definitely uh, something going on there. Or it could be another thing where WrestleMania is the time where they take all the tag teams and squish them all into one match, yeah. and then just let let the moves fly. That's the way it looks like. Because I mean, if they still want New Day to be getting booed, you're sure as hell not going to get booed against League of Nations. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, I think this could be a fatal four-way or, or something. Uh, I don't know. And unfortunately, I, I don't think this is going to get the attention that I would like New Day to have. But you know, uh, they'll probably have a nice backstage segment and then get to be out there with a bunch of other guys. But I don't know. I, I wish they could get just a straight, clean match. But I think we're going to get at least triple or, or maybe fatal four. I mean, we can talk about this in NXT, but I, there's rumors that there's a certain tag team that might be coming up before WrestleMania, and that's a tag team we've been wanting. To have for a while. I think that's a lot of pressure and faith put into that team. It is. When you do that. when I mean, I know what you're saying about Golden Truth, but those guys have been around and can do it. Sure. You know, as opposed to, hey, I know you guys have been wrestling in front of a, you know, thousand, a couple thousand people here and there, you know, on smaller shows. Go do a hundred thousand and deliver. Uh, just saying. No pressure. The fans will go crazy. They sell, Enzo and Cass sell a lot of merch. Yeah, I think we see Enzo and Cass winning the NXT titles, you know, at WrestleMania weekend. But I, I do not see them going for okay. the WWE titles. Fair NXT. enough. That would still be a big moment. Good point. Um, well, we got to talk about this match that Scotty mentioned a few minutes ago. Paul Heyman had a – well, actually, before Monday Night Raw even began last night, Brock Lesnar decided to attack Dean Ambrose in the parking lot, throw him on top of a limo, bust up the mirror, bust up the window – I don't know who's paying for it, but Paul Heyman had this to say. So this is fair warning to any member in that locker room anywhere in the world that wants to step up. Go to the hospital tonight and visit the barely breathing Dean Ambrose and ask him what happens when you earn the wrath of Brock Lesnar. Yeah. And then... Dean had this to say. Well, actually, after <laughs> after Dean drove an ambulance. I think Dean said. Bleh, bleh. Yeah, I don't know where the driver was, but he, he stumbled down to the ring, and Brock Lesnar just stepped on his face. That was so just good. Just disrespect. Oh my God, my God. To which Dean got on the mic and then muttered out these words. No holds barred. Street fight. Brock Lesnar, Dean Ambrose. No titles involved, just utter chaos. I meant to tell you, I hope you grab the soundbite of the uh, that he does in transition of those words. No, I did not. I'm sorry. No, no, no. But I should have said something. That's okay. Uh, Brock Lesnar running at you at full speed when that happens in the parking lot, that has to be the scariest thing on the he planet. He almost leaped over the hood of the car. Yeah, I can't. I can't imagine anything scarier than if you just saw Brock running at you at full speed. Like, no, I'm done. <laughs> Dean's so crazy. Oh, Dean is Lord. so crazy. Yeah, he really is. And I, I think this match, man, the build up for this. If you want someone that can counteract Paul Heyman, and and uh, someone posted a picture of Roddy Piper. I forget what match it was. Back in the '90s, where he just had that crazy look on. Like the mm-hmm. thing about Piper is. I know Dean Ambrose the lunatic fringe, but Piper, he didn't have to show you he was crazy. You knew he was crazy. Yeah. And that's where I want Dean Ambrose to be. I don't want him to have to do anything silly. I want him just literally, I want to look at him and be like, you're out of your freaking mind. And that's what happened last night. And I like that. Fastlane had a moment of that. Fastlane, they didn't quite catch the whole thing on camera. It was brilliant that um, uh, Dean's doing the, like, give me a minute uh, as he's getting up. And then Brock comes over to him. And just before Brock lays in his attack... Uh, Dean slaps Brock in the face. Yep. And those knees that were coming got a lot faster and a lot harder. But that moment was there where it's like, that's a that's a Piper-esque moment. That's of, a man like, right there. Yeah, what are you doing? That's so nuts. Don't mm-hmm. do that. 
completely crazy. Loved it. Dale? Yeah, man, you guys said it. I mean, this this is one of the programs that are going into it that has some good emotion to it and uh, is one of the few lead-ins from, from previous things besides, you know, the main event. Uh, so I was, I was happy to see that they made this official and these two, these two chemistry in the ring, too, really works well together. And, you know, a lot of times Brock kind of, you know, uh, literally and, and metaphorically steamrolls people while he's in there. And I think that Ambrose can, can uh, deal with them pretty well and, and works uh, to counteract him perfectly. I think there's a mutual respect. I mean, if, I don't know if Brock Lesnar looked at Dean Ambrose's body of work, but for God's sake, the guy is not afraid of anything. So I think there's definitely – and obviously, you know – Paul Heyman is an advocate of people who know how to perform, especially on the microphone, and you couldn't really get much better than Ambrose, really. And, De- yeah, Dean's a great uh, dichotomy to Brock mm-hmm. of, like, I know you'll hurt me. Go ahead. Keep hurting me. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, a, it's an element of what we saw last year with Reigns, that Reigns was laughing off the offense that Brock was doing. Mm-hmm. And it made Reigns more of a badass. This is going to do a whole lot for Dean. I think so too, and it's interesting. We assume, and, and this is his first WrestleMania um, in singles competition, and that oh. that alone makes me very excited for it. What was last? Oh yeah, wasn't it just him and Reigns last year or something? No, who was it last? No, Reigns and no, we're talking. No, we're, Ambrose was in the ladder match last year. Yes, yes, right. he was, and it's it's well deserved. Yeah, and he thought that was painful. Well, <laughs> this year Ooh. you're fighting Brock Lesnar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Make him count. And and also it's funny this whole time we thought it was going to be Brock and Wyatt and now we have True. no idea what the hell I mean they lose at oh, Fastlane <laughs> they lost at Fastlane essentially to help Ryback turn that's why they really lost I think so so let's just take it back a moment to the Royal Rumble where the Wyatts mattered and they eliminated freaking Brock Lesnar which surely would unfold a str- oh. Oh, nothing? Nothing is coming from that? Okay, cool. So <laughs> then we move into this Titans thing, and obviously the new guys the, are going to take down these three guys that probably don't need it. Oh, no, no, they're not going to win that either. Okay, cool. So <laughs> I don't know if the Wyatts are destined for the Andre the Giant Battle Royal <laughs> or what, but it does not seem like it matters at all. Yeah, they picked up the win on Monday, but only, like you're saying, to set up Ryback, I guess. Well... Having some kind of... If we see Ryback versus Kane at WrestleMania, oh my god, snooze alert. I mean... Everybody, there's 100,000 seats, Dale. We're gonna need a bathroom break at some point. <laughs> That's the thing, is like, I, I, I was shocked when I saw the Wyatts lose at Fastlane. And yeah. then, last night on Raw, as much as I appreciated Ryback as a character leaving and then saying I'm doing this by myself no disrespect then it hit me oh my god that's why the Wyatts lost so Ryback can say that he won the match and doesn't need anybody I'm like what the hell it's unusual it wasn't formula that's for sure no like what everybody it's like oh this will happen this will happen this happens like you got us uh, but it might stop there. I don't know. What is Bray gonna do at WrestleMania? He's he he should be in a major match. He was a freaking tight. Is Bray is Bray gonna wrestle Ryback? Is that the match that they're setting up? Well, no. I got I got a potential thing. We're talking about what Rock's gonna do. Maybe there's a segment between Rock and the Wyatt family. Would that be of interest? That could make sense because The Rock is everything Bray Wyatt hates. He is a superstar. He is Mr. Entertainment. He is uh, one of the biggest celebrities, essentially, we have, Mm -hmm. when you think about it, all throughout the world. And he's someone who enjoys the limelight. He's someone... So Bray Wyatt could consider him uh, a a fake... Right. You know what I mean? That could make sense. Bray Bray Wyatt's... uh, He he could spin that into something. And then Strowman's going to get torn apart. I don't see how any of that can happen when... I mean, why do we spend all this time focusing on this story angle then? If they were just to take a switch and do do none of that and just have a rock. I have no idea. I don't don't know. I think a lot of stuff has been changed, but... I think Shane Shane changed a lot of stuff. I don't think Shane's been in place for a very long time. Nope. I think the... The inclusion of Shane McMahon, or the, all the talk of the Wyatts versus or Undertaker, um, or, or Braum being in that spot, and then with Brock, all, all these things, I think Shane has changed a lot of WrestleMania. Yep. I think you're right. 
And, and for the for the better, though, if, if those were their previous plans for the Undertaker, it would have been another what feels like a throwaway match. So I, I'm 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 glad they came to whatever understanding that they could to make that happen with Shane. Very much so. I'm I'm excited to see how it builds over the next five weeks. And lastly, before we move on, we now are going to have what's up? I was going to say, are we talking a little fast lane? We're uh, close. Okay, we're going to go right now. Uh, we don't know who Charlotte's going to face at WrestleMania, but mm-hmm. she did have a bit of a. A pointer last night for Becky Lynch. Becky, watch out! Just completely messing with her and Sasha. It's apparently going to be either Sasha Banks or Becky Lynch taking on Charlotte at WrestleMania. I hope it ends up being a triple threat, and I hope they get at least 20 minutes. Yes. Me too, and me too. There you go. And I hope there's a secondary Divas match. I hope it's not just that. I hope that there's also... Because we got we got plenty of other Divas that can go, and it doesn't need to be all of them at once. I think it'd be okay. Is there anything you want to mention from Fastlane? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, one thing I, I really want to mention, I, I know this sounds like a bit of a rant, but um, uh, there was one exceptional, exemplary standout performer in Fastlane uh, in Chris Jericho. Mm-hmm. Um, I was a little... I, I enjoyed the show a lot. I thought there was some um, disappointing uh, not-selling either right after the match or from submissions that no one's doing it. They're taking me out of the believability of it, which okay. is always disappointing. I think you understand that as yeah, a I, fellow performer. I sure well. do, yeah. Uh, and I don't want to name those names because if you're buying it and you're believing it, great. I don't want to point that out. But I will point out that Jericho, in the match with AJ Styles, AJ was great. Miz has been great. But Jericho, in that match, was exemplary in the the finale of it. Mm-hmm. of the clawing and tearing of the submission that he's in yep. and the buildup of eventually having to tap out and then the aftermath after that, like he made AJ in such a gigantic way yeah, and didn't hurt his own character, didn't do any of that, um, but it was it was so exemplary. Like, go back and watch that if you haven't seen it. And that's what Jericho's done for years. For Christ's sake, he put over Fandango at WrestleMania. Right, but he, he just did it at a thousand percent. He like, did. Watching him tear and claw and then want it, that scream that he does right before he taps. Yep. Like, that is a star maker. That was so, so great. And Jericho, I, I don't sing his praises a lot, but that was so fantastic. So great to see. Well said. Where do you where do you think it heads for these two? I mean, are they are they going to be in a tag team match for WrestleMania, or, or was mm. that just something maybe for I don't the think next so. couple of weeks? I don't know. I you know if they fight again, that is fine by me. Uh, I'd you know if if it's uh, something with Owens in the in the mix, I think that'd be great because he doesn't have anything lined up either. He doesn't right now. Um, you know they're they can do no wrong at this point in my book. Even Miz, if Miz was thrown in there, Miz has been great in all this as well. Miz has been crushing it. So, you know, whatever those guys do, I'm watching. They got me. I love it. Well, you know who else has us? It's going to be Sami Zayn and Samoa Joe. They pin each other for the second week in a row. There's no finish. It was brilliantly done. (laughs) It's another draw. Um, Wow. We still don't know what the hell's happening. Love it. Super great match and an ending that I, I mean, I certainly haven't seen something like that in a, in a long time. And yeah, I love, I love dragging this out, and it, it's just, it's highly entertaining. And who, who doesn't want more matches between these two? They're, they're both awesome in there. You know, NXT, they, they, they don't forget about the history. They're going back to the old school. They're watching a lot of old stuff, and they're, they're just rehashing ideas that work, and they're, and they're putting modern spins on them. And I love seeing it. Unfortunately, our buddy Alex Riley did come up in the losing end. But he lost to Ty Dillinger, and it was really cool to see Ty get a rub. I thought it was a really solid match, and it was good to see Riley. But it is interesting. You just you could see he's legitimately pissed off. Like now he comes out to like that green screensaver background. He's like, "What the hell is this? What? Why is it? Why am I? Who's doing this?" Yeah, like he's, he's legitimately pissed. It's more fuel for the character. Like it's 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 just fueling him each and every week, and you can see it. Like it's playing through on TV. Yeah, I like heel Riley. I'm digging that. Corey Graves had a good one-liner where he says, what are you so mad at? Did he get wronged by an Uber driver? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love Graves. He has gotten so much better, and he's really solid, and his one-liners are on point. They're very, very yeah, clever. Yeah, I, I, I'd love to have him on the show at some point. He's a, he's a rad dude. Yeah, huge fan of Graves for sure. And then, of course, Enzo Cass and American Alpha defeated Dash Dawson and Blake and Murphy. Uh, we'll see what that's leading to as far as TakeOver goes. But solid episode of NXT as always. Let's get to Impact really quick, and then some Lucha Underground, and then we're going to get to Chavo. All right, so 
once again, another solid impact, I thought. Yeah, really good. Uh, they, they did not uh, ease up at all with because uh, they're it's London right now. Is that mm-hmm. right? Yes. Yeah, um, so they got their the they're in England. They're doing those tapings. The crowd goes crazy. Uh, Monsters ball match. Whoa, dude, they're crazy. Oh wait, well, real quick shout out to Jimmy Havoc, Progress Wrestling, uh, the, their longest reigning champion. Mm-hmm. And if you know Jimmy Havoc, he's a see you next Tuesday, as they say over in England. There you uh, go. That he <laughs> he is a bad dude. That's what they constantly chant at him. And that's what they constantly tell him. I had a chance to meet him. Not a nice guy, you know. Yeah, like sure. Jimmy Havoc. He's a he's a dastardly fellow. Makes a debut backstage. Um, he was the guy that came up. And oh, I didn't know who that was. That's Jimmy Havoc. Interesting. Yeah, he's fantastic. If you ever get a chance to watch any Progress Wrestling, he was their longest reigning champ. And he basically said, he's like, I have an issue with Rosemary, not you. Mm-hmm. I like that Rosemary character. She's doing a great job. Yeah, she is freaky. Mm-hmm. So we might be seeing Jimmy Havoc. I don't know if he's going to be a, a permanent part of the roster. I don't know if it's just for a little bit of time. I don't know what's going on, but I'm really excited to see that. And how about that Monsters Bowl? Oh, dude, those freak me out. I don't know if it's because of the WWE PG era where that stuff is so tame now. But yeah. when I see that, it, it creeps me out. Yeah, what were your, what was your thoughts on Monsters Bowl? I didn't get to see this week. My DVR did some weird thing where it recorded just the beginning of a different show, and then that was the end of my recording. How was that show? Oh. Oh. How was that show? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't watch it. It had not enough wrestling in it. <laughs> oh, take that, Shit's Creek on Pop TV. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> That's a damn It was shame. funny. Right at the end of it, they were like, oh, and every you know every week we have TNA, and then it cut off. I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it should have said. Uh, well, well, I know. I can tell you, Dale, it was phenomenal. Um, the Monsters Ball is crazy. The Wolves managed to retain. EC3 and Spud defeated Matt Hardy and Tyrus. Uh, Spud actually joined during the match. EC3 wanted one on two. Spud helped him out. And we basically have feuds setting up between Beer Money and Eric Young and Bram. They basically, they brawled all throughout the two-hour show. Like, yeah. every 20 minutes, the cameras are back. And there's it's like a, a Family Guy sketch. The like, other oh, fighting still. Right. And then sometimes something would quell, or you see another segment. It's like, all right, well, then we're good there. And you see Beer Money walk up, and then, boom, attacked again. So great. Um, and also, I thought it was really cool storytelling with... Um, the uh, with Tyrus and Matt Hardy going up to potential uh, teammates mm-hmm. of Matt Hart or of uh, EC3 and saying like no, you know don't get involved, don't get involved, Spud. I love and it. And then Drew Galloway offering his services to EC3 and him saying like nope, I'm just doing this on my own. So I like seeing you know WWE. We it's a formula where you, hey you got a mystery partner. We never see who that person is. We never see anybody trying to recruit. Nope. We're seeing the backstage goings on of. Who's it going to be? And then Spud ends up just coming out there, just because. Fantastic. I really dug that. And also, there's a feud setting up between Mike Bennett and Drew Galloway, which I really like that because, you know, Drew Galloway is, is you know, Mr. Stand-Up, and he's, you know, super uber babyface, and Mike Bennett's... Is that stand-up in, comedy? Uh, yeah. Very much. Yeah. He's, he's got a solid five minutes. Are you gonna, is he going to open for you? It, no. Certainly not going to open for me. No, mm. no, no. I don't think he would. He's not deserving. He wouldn't want that position. <laughs> Nobody does. Uh... <laughs> And then, but then Mike Bennett's the you know the new upstart. He's got Maria. I really like the way that was going. He attacked Galloway backstage, and we have lockdown this week. The storyline between Eli Drake and uh, Grado, otherwise known Gr- now, no, as- Grado's not around anymore. Odarg the Great. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's a totally different wrestler. So Dale, Odarg, so the Great. Gr- so Greatheart got fired, and uh, they made an announcement that Odarg the Great was showing up. It's basically Grado with his tights. His name is spelled backwards, and he's wearing a mask. <laughs> That's awesome. And Eli Drake. I was really worried there. You know, I mean, there's been a lot of rumors about TNA and the way that they actually do that, you know, fired thing. And sometimes they, you know, I mean, I think even Chavo was kind of a victim of the uh, actually getting fired when they gave him the suit. <laughs> He's kind of thing. So I was worried that they were actually going to get rid of him. He's one of my favorite characters on TNA. Dude, what a passive aggressive way to actually get rid of yeah. an employee. And I love how Eli's been reacting to it. It's really he's so incredibly frustrated and pissed off. Mm-hmm. I really like it. And so we have lockdown this week. Uh we have Eli Drake taking on Odark, Beautiful People versus Dollhouse, and EC three versus Hardy. It's gonna be really fun, but I like what they're they're really building a lot of stuff past this as well. And the knockouts are doing something unprecedented. 
They're lockdown. having a lethal lockdown match. They're doing the weapons match. Three on three. Yeah. They've not done that before with the knockout, so it's weird. This is the first time I could that I can think of where the divas in WWE are outshining the knockouts. Mm -hmm. So I think the knockouts are now trying to step up their game because knockouts in TNA forever have been the dominant females. Sure. Like really bringing the wrestling. And now I think they're trying to step their game up. Well, plus with TNA, the contracts are such a weird situation. You never know who's coming or going. Right. Which is a big issue. Uh, but it's going to be really fun. And lockdown's going to be great this week. And, uh, I, well, if you're listening to this, lockdown already happened. So right. we'll talk about it next week. But they're building up it some... It seems like, you know, too, they, mm -hmm. they maybe, you know, the show has been so good since they moved over to the new network. I wonder, you know, they have so many in the can, it's hard to know if it's just happy coincidence or what. But I do wonder if maybe because they were unsure of how things were going, if things just got messy there for a little while because... Now that they're on a network that seems to support them and they don't have to worry about that contract, at least for the time being, it seems like they're they're back on point or at least they're able to focus on what they need to do. Yeah, and I think they're building a lot of stuff, and so uh, kudos to them for sure. Moving on, Lucha Underground, baby. Talk about building. Woo! Cool scene between Eva Lee and Katrina right off the top. She's like, if I ever get my hands on you, it's going to be ugly. Ooh. Puma defeats Pentagon Jr. What an incredible main event that was. It was almost a double pin until Puma did a bit of a bridge to get his shoulders off the mat. We had Cage destroying Joey Ryan, but Joey Ryan had a great scene with Cortez Castro where they talk about how they're undercover cops. Yes. Yeah, Love backstage that. on the bench. Well, let's not forget, too, Puma almost broke Pentagon Jr.'s arm. Yeah. Like, he, he put him in there, and Vampiro was freaking out, and it's he let him go, like, just letting you know. I got you. That I got, yeah, I got you. That was good. <laughs> These two are freaking phenomenal, too. I mean, you could just watch this one match and be satisfied, but the the amount of entertainment that comes out of Lucha is just, uh, I don't know, better better than, than almost anything on TV right now. But I, I especially love this match between the two. I think you can watch this match even if you don't get El Rey. I think they have this match in its entirety online, maybe the Lucha website or I hope so. on their YouTube page or something like that. We should tweet at Jim Cornette Check and ask him out, if though. he knows where it is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's, yeah, I'm sure he knows where all the good stuff is. Hey, I, I like that Cornette saying what he's saying. I always appreciate differing opinions out there, and I, I think it's great in a way because if he's calling attention to it, to wrestling purists, the people that want to listen to what Cornette has to say, and they're checking it out for themselves they and, might making like their, it. and making their own opinion – that's great. Yeah, he actually got a lot. Probably got a lot more eyes on it, and a lot. Yeah. Honestly, if you watch this, I don't know how you don't enjoy something of it. Yeah. I mean, especially I, yeah, you're a wrestling fan. It's it's yeah. different and it's bizarre. All the segments put together and the way it does it and the production value. Dude, it's so cinematic. I love how the episodes are bookended. You have an amazing thing to start off. This was Katrina and uh, Eva Lee's, mm -hmm. and then it all ends with Mysterio telling the story of Dario Cueto's father and how he became evil, essentially. It's not easy to follow, but you know there's some major stuff being thrown at you. Yeah, you're seeing a training sequence between, you know, with Mysterio and him him training in a way that you've never seen him train before. Like, you've seen him do squats backstage or something like that previously. But now he's doing... Which you do before every show. That's what I, that's what I do. And sometimes I knock people out. We had yeah. a couple of special guests today, but knocked them out. Sorry, my bad. Hold on a minute, player. Uh, yeah, sorry, Teddy Long. Knocked him right out. Um, and uh, well, so much for the tag team match. Tag team match. <laughs> yeah, uh, he's in the ambulance. Yeah, that's <laughs> he's okay. not going to drive back here. That's fine. Uh, but you have Rey Mysterio rolling around, doing all these strikes, and then telling the the story, and then cutting to the story, seeing it playing out cinematically, and then cutting back. Like, yeah, it's it's so different than all the backstage segments and stuff we see now. It is, as you say very very cinematic it's written it's clever it's well done and it keeps you invested there's mo this season is really breaking out multiple storylines and it's allowing guys to shine like even the the segment with uh, sexy star and willie mack she was running away and we don't see who willie was staring at or what or what and i love it because these are guys we know like joey ryan's on championship wrestling every week willie willie mack was on championship wrestling with us for years and it's awesome being able to see them in a cinematic environment like that. Mm -hmm. And it's really well done, and it's well-directed. Whoever's directing them, maybe it's Rodriguez, I don't know, but whew. You know what else it is? Hmm. Well-produced. It is well-produced. Very well-produced. Dale, final thoughts before we hit Chavito? <laughs> uh, I like Narver's trying to lead into the interview, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's why, uh, yeah, I mean, that's why we, Johnny and I don't uh, 
play uh, volleyball and uh, have the song playing with the boys. Well, no, that's well, that is my favorite song. But no, that's why I kicked the Dale because I know you the production thing. I'm goose. I get it. I also didn't do the I'll, interview. Th- I'll die, and you just weep and go like, I got this. I well. <laughs> If only there was someone that could tell us more about Lucha Underground. I think that's a great idea. With that said, Chuck's you... Chuck's not here. Well... Chuck's not here. <laughs> you both conducted an interview with the Chavo Guerrero, so let's just get right to it. Today we are blessed to have a true legend in the wrestling community. He is a third-generation luchador from one of the most famous families in Lucha Libre, He's wrestled on every inhabited continent and has had several major championships, including the ECW World Heavyweight title, WWE, WCW, and TNA Tag Team Championships, just to name a few. Please join us in welcoming the one, the only, Chavo Guerrero Jr. How's it going, Chavo? Hey, what's going on, man? Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, it's a pleasure to have you. I think uh, I don't think I've had a chance to catch up with you since you were on uh, AfterBuzz TV. I think that was like a year or two ago. It was you, me, and Thea on there. So uh, it's it's nice to hear your voice. Yeah, yeah. Um, so since it's been a while, I mean, first of all, congratulations uh, on an amazing show and a riveting second season of Lucha Underground so far. I mean, we're only a few episodes deep, but... Things are already feeling pretty dark and unhinged. Uh, what's it been like to be a part of such a phenomenal product? You know what? It's, it was, it's been great, man. It's one of those that, you know, I kind of believed in the product right from the start. And, uh, you know, a lot of people didn't know exactly what we were going to be doing. And uh, I had an idea. But then when I saw the actual product come out I was and all the production values, I was like, well, what? I was I was so thankful that it was something different, finally. And everybody claims it's different, but nobody would be it. Everybody's just a carbon copy of, you know, the, the big boy over there. So right. It's kind of uh, it's great to be a this. And uh, kind of, I just feel that we're changing wrestling. I think we're almost taking wrestling out of, you know, like uh, the last millennium and, and, you know, last century and bringing it back in, you know, because it's been done the same way for so long. And it had been done the same way for so long, you know. And then, I guess in the late '90s, it, it changed it a little bit, and then they kind of reverted, kind of going back to when you know it did it. So, I just feel that we're really changing wrestling, man. Absolutely, I would definitely agree with that. I mean, you guys are approaching it from a different aspect and and doing things in a way that is true storytelling. And I think, you know, just from the reaction that you guys have gotten, it's it's obvious that you guys are really connecting. I mean, you guys recently announced uh, Season 3, so I know we're psyched about that for such an early announcement. Uh, does the timing of that allow you guys to, you know, kind of write the storylines with a little bit more breathing room? Okay, right back to what you said before. Uh, you know, wrestling has always been billed as a TV show, you know, everything you see on, on you know, their, you know, it was, whether it was SmackDown or Raw or Nitro or, or uh, you know, uh, what was the other Thunder. But it's built as a TV show, but really it really wasn't. It was really a just an, a trying to upsell you to either the network or a pay-per-view or a live event, you know. But we're actually the true only wrestling TV show out. We treat it as a TV show that just happens to have wrestling in it. You know, so it's something like if you're not a wrestling fan, it's kind of hard to get into the other guys if you don't truly love wrestling. But if you don't like, you don't write like wrestling or don't know anything about it, you watch our show, and you're like, wow, that's just a good show. It's just a great show. So I, I'm really happy and proud about that. Um, as far as season three goes and writing season two, uh, we kind of, when we heard about season three coming out, we were just finishing season two. So kind of had no bearing on uh, kind of what we were doing there. And, and, and writing that, that show changes all the time anyway because, you know, you have people get hurt or, or uh, you know, a, 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 a new talent or doesn't, another talent doesn't, you know, have a you know, contract dispute or whatever you want to call it. So we're always kind of – we have an idea of where we're going. And Krista Joseph, uh, Chris Roach, and Matt Stolman really have, you know, they're, they're really killing it. And, and they have, you know, a long-term – you know what they want to do long-term goals long-term storylines but sometimes that changes a lot on the fly you know and sometimes you expect somebody to to get over and they're not so you got to change the storyline a little bit 
at the same time, you have people that aren't expected, you know, to do a whole lot. And let's make sure you know they're totally getting over the crowd's loving them. So we, we write for them, you know. So we kind of really go exactly what the what the crowd wants and what the, what the fans want and, and give it to them. You know, we don't really just do what we want. <laughs> you know, we kind of listen to them. It's their show. They're the ones watching it. So we're going to do whatever it takes to get them to tune in more. Well, uh, yeah, what a novel idea to listen to the audience and, you know, adapt the show, too. That's, that's great to hear. It's not, not uh, a novel, right? It's a, it's a new, it's a new uh, concept, actually listening to the audience and giving them something that they kind of want. Hey, then it's different, huh? <laughs> yeah, don't wait for this Nielsen family to tell you what's going on. You know, listen to the people. Um Shavo, I know you're a producer for Lucha Underground. The title can mean so many different things. Uh, what does that mean for you at Lucha Underground? Well, for that producer credit, it's really kind of weird because, uh, you know, in a lot of other shows, sometimes you just introduce somebody to people, then you get producer credit and stuff like that. Well, with me, um, I'm kind of involved in everything, especially when the show first started. I was involved in, when I say everything, everything from, you know, kind of from input stories to, you know, uh, input to editing to input to directing to input to camera work to input to the ring. To the, the wardrobe, to not only you know the matches, it was kind of everything because you know Lucha Underground, the, the guy you know Mark Burnett's guys, uh, Baba G Company, had never done shot wrestling before, so it was very new to them. Um, so you know, I kind of was hands on, hands on, along with some other people too, but definitely were hands on and, and kind of explaining everything. Once they, you know, after a few episodes, three or four or five episodes, man, they. <laughs> They're like pros, you know. These guys are so good. They went out and and, and, and are killing it, as you guys can see in the product. Um, but uh, so d- definitely still am involved in, 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 a, in a lot and quite a bit. So that producer role gets it, it, it kind of it's a very it's very vague and very broad. But I'm kind of involved in, in a lot of it there, and it changes from show to show. Sometimes you know I'll just be working on, uh, on on matches and sometimes we'll have input in storylines and sometimes, you know, I'll be putting out fires for talent, you know, it's, it's kind of, uh, I don't know, it's pretty, pretty broad, but it's, it's really, it's great, you know, I, I, I enjoy it and it's something that my family's been doing for years and years, um, you know, running promotions and stuff and just to be able to do that also is kind of, uh, it's a big it's a blessing, man, I'm very happy to have that to do it. Yeah, it's great to hear that you're taking such an active role overseeing everything um, and being such a such an involved part of it. Uh, was that was being a producer something you wanted to pursue back in your WWE or TNA days? Yeah, uh, yeah, yes, I mean, I mean, eventually, I always thought that I was going to go that route. You know, um, working with WWE is a different route. Doing that, you know, it's very, very. There's agents that they call producers now. And it was definitely different. And I was approached to do that. I just didn't think I was ready to step out of the ring. You know, and it's very hard to do. You can't really do both over there. Fit Finley did it for a little bit, but really they don't really they don't really like that too much. So I still love being in the ring. So in Lucha Underground, I'm able to kind of do both and kind of come in for a little bit and do some wrestling when needed and then step back and then do some producing. And agenting, you know, so that, that it's kind of a, it, it's great. I, I enjoy it very much, and um, it's just you know it's just something that I just think that we were born to do. The, the, my girl, the girl family, my family, we've done kind of everything in wrestling, you know, from, from setting up the rings to taking tickets to selling eight by ten to wrestling to promoting to kind of the everything, you know. So uh, and and, it, and wrestling changes for sure, you know. So, but we're. Um, you know, we were able to adapt to it and um, kind of kind of put to, to use 75 years of wrestling that's been in, you know, just in our blood, you know. So there's a lot of things that we've learned that uh, people don't, you just can't, you just can't teach. You have to learn by experience and just by years and years of doing it, you know. Well, speaking of you in the ring, Chavo, you made your debut in season two finally with a little bit of backup this time. You know those guys are trouble though, right? <laughs> you know, man, Corrales, we always say it with, uh, with, with us. You mess with one bean, you mess with a whole burrito, man. But, man, you know, to honest, man, we, uh, we, yeah, it's just cool to have a little backup up there, you know, and it goes up to me, and I have a lot of my family members up there with me, too, you know. Uh, 
but hey, we all stick together, you know. <laughs> all right, we'll see where it gets you. I like I like the bean burrito analogy, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and I South Mexican, I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> So we've already had some really great Lucha Underground feuds with uh, Blue Demon and Tejano and uh, Sexy Star. Who's on your current wish list or, or maybe your ass whooping list? You know, kind of everybody there. You know, to be honest, you can kind of go, um, if, you're, if you don't have the, the championship in mind, you know, then maybe you're in the wrong profession. Uh, but definitely, you know, we always kind of have that in mind and, and actually shooting, you know, for just to better yourself and kind of, uh, you know, take over a little bit. But at the same time, I kind of know my role in where that's at, you know. Notoriously, you know, the booker, even though I'm not the booker, but guys involved in the booking office are always the, the champs, you know. <laughs> They're just notorious, you know. But um, we kind of don't, we don't really do that, you know. We call what, 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 what's useful. What my what is useful for me? What my role is? You know, so we I, I I get it. I know what it is. I'm there. I, I need to. We need to get these the the younger guys, these guys that have so much talent that just a lot of people just don't know who they are yet. We need to get them pushed and get them, you know, give them the torch and let them run with it, you know, and uh, um, kind of let them take over because that's the future of the business right there, you know. Um, not saying that I'm done, but. You know, you're, you, you, we're, we're, I'm on a, a different part of my career as far as these guys are on the upper upwards of their career, you know. So we're always there to help them out. And, and I really take a lot of pleasure and pride in seeing these guys that have been, you know, have had Russell go some places and been really good and have never really been on, on, on TV, on the camera side, and really teach them how to, to, to do it, you know, to play to the cameras, to take your time in the ring. To um, you know how and why and when we do stuff in the ring. You know, just because you can do a backflip doesn't mean you should do a backflip. There's always you know a time and a place for everything, and you can get the most bang for your buck. And to see these guys come in and not really know, and now all of a sudden are are doing what we're teaching them, what I'm teaching them, what Vampiro's teaching them, what a couple other people are teaching them. It's really it, it's cool to be able to see that and to see these guys. It's like it's like I'm doing it, you know. So I, I take a lot of pride in that. I really love uh, teaching, and I'm kind of like a natural coach, you know, just in my blood. And just to be able to, to teach these guys, man, it's a, it's a great pleasure. So t- th- these policies of teaching and uh, showcasing and helping the young guys, is that referred to as the anti-WCW policy backstage? Yeah, you know what? The WCW, and it wasn't the... Some, some of the guys did, some of the veterans helped you, but back then everybody was so worried about their spot, and that's just the way it was back back in the day. You know when these guys kind of came up, it was like, hey, nobody helped you, you because nobody helped them. It's like you, you you get there because you wanted it and you had the desire to, to to be there. So what happened a lot of times in wrestling was like you know there wasn't things weren't passed passed down because of the fact that you know everybody needed their spot. But I think now it's just starting to change a little bit, and if we veteran guys don't teach these guys, it's, it's going to be lost. It's, it's, it's already like a, a lost art. It's, it's losing things that have been with it for years and years. Uh, so if we're not teaching them, then it's going to be gone because back in the day, people would wrestle in all these different territories, and they'd go to, you know, they'd go to, um, let's say, Japan, and then they they go to you know the Memphis territory. Then they go to the Texas territory. Then the California territory. And they, and they would learn all these different parts of the business. You know, being a heel, being a babyface, being a tag team, being singles, being a manager. All these different things. Well, now it's kind of lost that they're not being able to learn that too much. So if we don't teach them, it will be it'll be gone. And that's something that you know I want to get back to. I never want to see this business. I want to see it grow. I don't want to see it diminish. Do you, along those lines, do you think it's harder to be a wrestler nowadays than it was, say, 20 years ago or so? It was about five years ago. Five years ago, it was really tough. You know, WWE kind of monopolized everything, and, and you know, if they didn't watch it, and you kind of didn't have a job a lot of times. You really had a fight for it. Mm. But right now, with indie wrestling is alive and well, and people are are 
they're going everywhere, and, and you see it in, you know, a lot of our guys, Prince Puma, who's been in a lot of different places, and was turned down by the big boys. And all of a sudden he comes out, and he's incredible talent. I'm like, oh, my God, Willie Mack. I'm like, how where did this guy come from? You know, <laughs> Brian Cage, all these guys that are just, they're just really, really solid talent, really good. And they're just getting, they're going to be getting better. And so these guys have been, started wrestling in other places, you know, and, you know, if you want to go to the other, talk about the other guys, you know, like uh, like a CM Punk or like a Daniel Bryan, those guys were good for years. They were already good and they've been a lot of places, but they just never got the opportunity. So all of a sudden, we're starting to give these guys opportunities. So the other organizations are like following suit, going, wait, wait, wait a minute, all these talents are getting snatched up. You know, they're, they're seeing our product and going, who are these guys? Right. What do you mean we let one of these guys go? We let him go? We didn't pick him up? Who, who, who's one of this place? So their loss is our gain for sure. But I think everybody's starting to realize, like, oh, gosh, let's let's start hiring these guys. So it, it's, to be an indie wrestler right now, it's a, it's a great time for it's a great time for us, period. You know, with all the little wrestling organizations kind of going around, going around it's, it's, uh, it, it's, cool, it's cool to see it. You know, it's a, it's a resurgence in wrestling. Awesome. Yeah, that's so good to hear. Now, I, now I know there were some rumors uh, circulating about Lucha Underground maybe hitting the road for a limited schedule or, or filming in Mexico or even making an appearance in Dallas, I think, around WrestleMania time. Are there any truth to, to any of those rumors? I think a lot of it's rumors as of right now. You know, I haven't – nothing I don't believe is set in stone, and I would say that's above my, my pay scale, you know. <laughs> I, kind of, I pick up the phone if they need me to go somewhere, so I'll go somewhere. But uh, I don't really know for sure. I'm not sure if we're going to do it. So I would love to see it, you know, kind of kind of grow and go out. And I know there's a lot of great plans for Lucha Underground. And for what you see right now is not going to be what you're going to see in, in two or three seasons, you know, or two or three years. It's going to grow for sure. And it's, it's already grown exponentially in the second season. And we're only in, you know, episode five or whatever, four. So, uh, it's it's going to grow. It's going to get bigger, and a lot of things that they have ideas for. I hope they actually touch on them. But uh, we'll, we'll see here in the future. We'll see what uh, we'll see if we change wrestling again even more. Yeah, I mean it's 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 been awesome. It's it's interesting. The temple has become kind of a character unto itself, and, and you know obviously looks great on camera. So I, I think the product would definitely benefit from traveling some, but always having maybe a home base. And uh, what, how do you how do you feel about getting to shoot mainly on location? You know, it's, for me, it's, it's awesome because I, I live in Orange County, California, so it's close to L.A. Oh, that's great. I've always said, I've, I've said it for years. I've always said, look, wrestling would be like the perfect job if I could sleep in my own bed every night. You know, because we were on the road, you know, 280 days a year, or sleeping in a hotel 300 days a year. Yeah. You know, it, it, it was great. It just wasn't great, you know, not being home, not seeing my family anymore. Um, and that's kind of a reason why I kind of stepped back from wrestling for a while. Uh, but now all of a sudden I'm doing this and I'm shooting in LA, like, you know, you know, 50 miles from my house, door to door. So I'm actually able to go to work and then go home and sleep in my own bed. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. I'm pretty, I'm, 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 I'm got my blessings right now. You know, I, I know what I got and I hope it continues like that for a while. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. People that don't travel like that, they have like a home base you know, for their job, and they can just come home every day. They don't really know how lucky they are. And they think that we're the lucky ones getting to travel the world and stuff, but really it's, it's just like, it's like, <laughs> it's, it's not all it's cracked up to be, man. It's like you're just living in a plane, living out of a suitcase, living in a hotel by yourself. It's a pretty lonely, lonely existence. So, um, you know, for us to be, for me to actually have kind of, you, even though it's not a 95 job, but, you know, kind of in fall, starting to fall into that category a little bit and actually go to work and, and come home and see my own bed, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. It's pretty, and then for the rest, it's awesome. Yeah, I, uh, I love to travel for fun, but I'm sure the novelty wears off pretty quickly when you're on, like, city number 79 out of uh, 100 days and <laughs> airplane food doesn't, yeah, well, uh, doesn't well, sit I'm, that well. I'm a, yeah, well, I'm a four million miler. Oh my so god! That, that gives you how much I've actually flown over the course of my career. Four million miles, combined miles, and it's probably a little more than that now. So it's kind of like uh, you, you live on an airplane, you know. And, it, and it's uh, there, uh, there was a time when I kind of stepped away from us, and I said, if I never see another airport again, I'll be happy <laughs> because it was just you know you just go through security and you, and oh man, it's just 
same thing over and over, playing a you know a ten dollar bottle of water and uh. stuff, sandwich. <laughs> you know, it's pretty. Uh, it, it was tough. Well, Chavo, earlier you mentioned some of the talent and talking about, um, you know, how thrilled you are that they're coming through your doors and that you have them there to work with. Is there anyone in particular that, that surprised you with their talent or perhaps their charisma when they came to Lucha Underground? And is there anyone that you've uh, heard about or been scouting that you'd like to see join the Lucha Underground roster in the future? So everybody on Lucha Underground has impressed me in one way or the other. Uh, I mean, really, I mean, everybody, whether it's either their talent in the ring or their, their uh, backstage politics or whatever, that, these guys are so talented and so professional, and it's great to see them actually be on a successful program, you know, and these guys have been, you know, striving at it for a long time. And I think that shows, you know, the appreciation on our product, you know, for sure, on just, just how hard these guys work for us, you know, and for themselves, and to have this great product. Uh, this great show, but um, we're always scouting. We're always looking. We're always looking for the new, the new guy out there, you know. And, and whether it be somebody that's known or somebody that's not known, you know, I get, I get calls all the time from from wrestlers, and I, and I and people backstage kind of joke about it because I, they go, God, you know everybody in the wrestling world. But yeah, kind of. You know, from promoters to wrestlers to you know promotion guys <laughs> to to. Uh, from, you know, uh, guys that are PR departments in different cities, kind of been around a little bit, so I kind of know everybody. So I get a lot of calls from people that are like, hey, you know, at least inquiring or want to get their name out there and stuff. You know? So, uh, you know, we're going to hopefully in the next, you know, few months we'll see some definitely some new faces, you know, some really, really good faces. Well, a very serious question for you, Chavo. There's a guy you used to run with a couple years ago, and I'm curious, could Curl and White Survive in Lucha Underground? Uh, <laughs> you you never know. That was a that was a Mr. Man uh, creation, and uh, it kind of uh, uh, ran its course a little bit. But uh, you probably won't see the resurgence of, of Kerwin. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's uh, shift gears for a moment and discuss uh, Viva La Raza or or VLR clothing. How how did that come about? So you know what? That's something that man I thought about for a, kind of a long time, and, and my dad's really been talking about really. I mean, for the last thirty years, my dad's been trying to, you know, hit the that Hispanic demographic and give them something, whether it be a you know clothing or or programming or something. And no one listened to him. No one in LA. No one in Hollywood. No one. No one in TV really wanted to listen to him. Thought they thought that, you know, no, that demographic is you know no one. No one. It's not a, a profitable demographic. And then all of a sudden, everybody's realizing, whoa, this is like the fastest growing demographic in America and will soon be the majority, not the minority. You know, So now everybody's scrambling to, um, to cater to the Latinos, but they don't know how because they're not Latino. It'd be like me trying to cater to a, you know, a uh, white Jewish family or something. I, I wouldn't be able to do it. So I'm not, I'm not that. But I know how to cater to, to the Latino people. And, and what's funny is all of a sudden that whole Latino culture has kind of become pop culture. As you've seen with our show, which is kind of got some Latino undertones, people are really loving that, you know, and you see like the, the you know, low riders and, Everything Latino, Latino music, it's starting to get very pop culture. You look at Hollywood, everybody's starting to wear the bidet and the makeup for, for Halloween and stuff. Oh, yeah. Because it's, it's cool. It's really cool. All of a sudden, man, it was, it's really cool to be to be Hispanic, you know, when, when, you know, 20 years ago, we were always fighting for it, you know, and fighting for our heritage. And now all of a sudden, people are like, hey, that, hey that's cool. Are you, are you Mexican? Yeah. Oh, man, that's, that's really neat. You know, so... VLR is something that we've thought about for a long time. And like I said, my dad thought about doing this for years. So I went ahead and uh, trademarked uh, Viva Rasa, that me and Eddie used to say on TV all the time, and trademarked it for clothing. So um, we came up with VLR, and uh, it's a clothing company. I, I partnered with Ray Mysterio, told him about the idea. He loved it. And uh, kind of, uh, we've got some other cool partners that have been in the clothing world before, and I'm just creating... A a um, a brand, a new lifestyle brand, if you want to call it, that's kind of you know, on the par with like Ruka or Quicksilver, but kind of different, kind of.
kind of with that, those Latino undertones a little bit that caters to everybody, that everybody will wear, that everybody's cool to wear. And that's what we started calling it VLR. It's just like um, that uh, instead of saying Viva Rasa, everybody knows what it means, but just VLR. So everybody's kind of really buying, really kind of jumping on it right now. Everybody's kind of thinking like, ah, this is really cool. And we've got some, some uh, big people kind of really looking at it and kind of thinking like, uh, wow, okay, we've been trying to do this and we didn't know how to do it. But, so, you know, we'll, we'll see in the future. It's something that I'm uh, really, you know, putting my heart and soul in and, uh, and I think it's going to be all right. Yeah, I mean, it looks cool. I love the little luchador on the back of the T-shirt that I, I saw. So uh, I'm into it myself. So, let, yeah, good luck on that and let us know how it goes. Yeah, I know, for sure. For sure we will. Everything's kind of hitting at once, you know, with – Lucha Underground and the clothing line, and all of a sudden I'm doing things in, in on, t- on other things in film and TV and becoming a member of Stunts Unlimited, and I kind of got a lot of just starting my own production company, so I've kind of got a lot of things going on that's all kind of hitting at once, and it's kind of a full time to, to, to be me. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I call it. <laughs> well, I will aspire to be Chavo from here on. <laughs> Then that way we can make the burrito analogy, and we'll be we'll be good. <laughs> exactly, and people won't be like, you know, racist. <laughs> they won't throw the race card out there, even though we know. <laughs> I'll be like VLR, baby, VLR. <laughs> VLR, son, VLR. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chavo, what else? So, I mean, it sounds like it's a busy time. What else is keeping you busy when you're not in the ring? Then you're doing some production, and and what what else you got going on? Yeah, man. So, a um, couple of reality projects that we're working on, you know, and uh, awesome. Um, just, just kind of. I got a comic book coming out also uh, from Lion Forge Comics. It's called Warriors Creed, and it's kind of based on how my family's life, but with some, you know, definitely comic book esque. It's actually really cool. The same person, Fabian uh, Nicenza, I hope I'm saying his last name right. He actually wrote the comic Deadpool, which is now the movie that's super, super popular. Wow. So he wrote that comic. He also wrote he also wrote my comic. So people are all kind of buzzing about it already. And then we have a guy named Eddie Nunez, Nunez that's a, um, a like a top you know five comic artist that that drew it. So kind of gets this cool little buzz out there already, and it's and it hasn't been released yet, you know. So I've kind of pushed it a little bit, and we're looking pretty soon for the next couple of months to actually get it out there. Uh, so kind of cool. That's, that's another project, and uh, there's several other ones that I kind of got from too. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it is a good time to be Chavo Guerrero. I, huh? <laughs> yeah, I, I keep I keep throwing stuff against the wall, man. Hopefully something sticks. You know what I mean? Right. You but, know, I, I figured like, after I sit on, the, on my couch for about six months, and my wife's snarling, snarling at me, saying, "You know, you better get up and, and you know, get your butt in gear and get a job." <laughs> that uh, I kind of, uh, I kind of went overboard and started doing everything. You know, <laughs> hey, I tell you, snarling wife—that's a good motivator. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, well, thanks so much for your time today, Chavo. It's it's always a pleasure getting to chat with you and and. Uh, you know, everybody make sure to check out uh, Chavo and the rest of the Lucha Underground roster every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. on El Rey. And is there anything else we can put over for you? I mean, uh, what's your, your Twitter or, or Instagram, or how do you like people to follow you? Yeah, yeah, follow me on Twitter at Next Warrior, and follow me on Instagram at Chavo Guerrero Jr. And you can pretty much find out everything that's going on with me uh, on those. Wonderful interview, gentlemen. Wonderful interview. Yeah. And a wonderful guest. Yeah. He's a great guy. He's awesome. Yeah. Chavo. You couldn't you couldn't ask for a better guest than that, really. He's been absolutely everywhere in almost every organization that there is. So I, I just feel like he, he he could be a real jerk, but he's actually an absolute delight. He's been fun to work with a few times. Um he was on After Buzz once with me and uh we worked on the Iron Sheik roast together last year. Was it last year? <laughs> I think and he was he's awesome. And he's a great asset for Lucha Underground. Um, with, as he's talked about, you know, 75 years of wrestling knowledge all within the family and being able to put everything he's learned from his family and all the different companies into this passion project of Lucha Underground Mm -hmm. and share it with all the other talent. It's just, it's so great for that to be the case and that he's so enthusiastic about it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, I love what he said about the the legacy of it all and and how, you know, a lot of the younger guys, they don't, 
get to know a lot of things that used to happen because all the old guys are gone. And to have a guy like Chavo who's been around and can still be an in-ring performer but also impart that knowledge on the rest of the roster, I mean, he's just crucial to what's going on over there. And he found the fountain of youth, and that's a good thing to have. Oh, just share it, Chavo. Share it. I know. Give it to us. Anyways. Great show, everyone. Uh, let's get into uh, the closeout here. Uh, a lot of stuff that is going on with us. Like I said, you want this comic book? Go to our iTunes page. Rate us five stars. Write your most clever review. Take a screen cap. That's all you got to do. It'll take you a minute, and you might be getting one of these sent to you. We are at Wrestling Buds on Twitter. We are Facebook.com slash Wrestling Buds. Once again, I am at Jay Quasto. I am in the San Luis Obispo Comedy Festival coming up March 4th through the 6th. And also, uh, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, another big taping this Sunday, February 28th at the Ocean View Pavilion in Port Wyneme, 3 p.m. bell time. Just hit me up on social media if you're in Southern California and want to come out. It's free admission. We had such an amazing taping last time. Every match was phenomenal. It was so fun to call. We were really building some great stuff. So follow at CWF Hollywood on Twitter as well. Anything you can tease for that show? Uh, any, I honestly don't even know what's happening yet. Any of the players? Anybody that they, they, they might see? I assume Vermin's going to be there. Uh, our champion, Pretty Peter Avalon, is going to be there. Uh, possibly our tag team champions, Cold Cold World. I don't know, but I can tell you this. The last taping was, was a, a really, really great, and so we're, we're building some great stuff. We're almost at episode 250, and plus you could also watch it online. So hit me up on social media. I can tell you how to do that. Uh, with that said, Scotty, put yourself over. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Curtain Jerks, and you can listen to my comedy wrestling podcast, Curtain Jerks, available on iTunes and SoundCloud. And, of course, I have a video game podcast as well, uh, 16-Bits Podcast, also available on iTunes and SoundCloud. If you ever need a link, hit me up at Curtain Jerks on the Twitter. Dale Rutledge. Man, Scott, you just never stop giving your opinion on stuff, huh? You mm-hmm. need another podcast or two? Yeah, everybody uh, didn't ask for my opinion, so I'm giving it. <laughs> well, you can find me talking too much on uh, YouTube.com, Dishing on Movies. We have a brand new recipe. It is a cheeseburger wrapped in cheese fries. It's pretty much diet food. You can also find me on Instagram and Twitter at the Walking Dale. We love that. And also, uh, one... More thing. WrestleMania, as far as we know, we're going to do some kind of meetup. We just don't know where yet. We're going to try to work it out with the whole AfterBuzz crew. Yeah, MVP is going to be singing my song. At the and, show. And of course, MVP is going to be there. So at some point, we will definitely we'll figure that out. We'll announce it ahead of time and everything, which is cool. And also, one last thing. If you're a fan of Screen Junkies and their honest trailers, I actually was in one this past week for The Walking Dead Season 4 through 6. They had me play Chris Hardwick. Because he hosts The Talking Dead. That's awesome. It was really fun, and he actually he loved it. He tweeted twice about, not at me, unfortunately, but he did tweet about <laughs> how much he enjoyed it uh, both times. So um, he appreciates um, parody, being a big Weird Al fan as he is. Yes. And everyone enjoyed it. So if you want to check that out, look it up. Nice. Congrats. Thank you. So with that said, guys, thank you so much for watching. We love you. We'll see you next Ooh, week. Chavo. <laughs> Chavo, <todo> <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> Not quite.